Making Warhammer scenery is one of my absolute favorite parts of this hobby. And not to pat myself on the back, but I'm pretty f good at it. But when Games Workshop invited me over to Warhammer World for the launch of the Horus Heresy, I finally got the chance to make the ultimate pilgrimage of any scenery maker or lover of Warhammer terrain. I got to see the Games Workshop Warhammer World exhibition. And not just see it, for the first time in the history of Games Workshop, I was allowed to take in cameras and film a whole bunch of this amazing Warhammer showcase and show it to the world. Now as I'm sure you guys know, the new edition of Warhammer the Horus Heresy has officially launched and here at Zorbazorp, we are Emperor's massive balls deep into the carnage of the 31st millennium. And over the next few months, we'll be unveiling a Warhammer narrative campaign like nothing you have ever seen before. In fact, we've already shot it, and to get ready for our massive 10-day shoot in Australia and subsequent filming in Ireland, we needed a whole host of Horus Heresy gaming boards, so today we're going to be diving deeper into one of the most famous battlegrounds of the Heresy. The Ultramar planet of Kelth is about to be soaked in blood here on Zorbazorp, as the very naughty word bearers manned by the handsome Ollie from Broadsword Wargaming enact the greatest ritualized betrayal in the history of Warhammer and turn upon their brothers in blue. Today is the day that I set myself against the best of the best. I'm going to proudly stand behind my scenery and see if it holds up to the zenith of Warhammer diorama creation in the heart of Games Workshop. And as a little cherry on top, you guys will get to see a sneak preview of some of the insane scenery that we've prepared for the Mark of Kelth campaign. Now, before you get worried about this Warhammer exhibition getting spoiled for you, have no fear. It was actually mandated by Games Workshop that even though we could film pretty much whatever we wanted inside the exhibition, we wouldn't give away too much in the edit. So what I'm showing you here is but a fraction of what lies beyond the exhibition doors. I would hazard a guess it wouldn't even constitute 10% of the total display. So without further ado, whose scenery cuisine will reign supreme? Yes, that was an Iron Chef reference. So before we go hard for heresy, we've got to start at my roots with the only Middle Earth display inside the exhibition. Now the Pelennor is moved out to the foyer, the new War in Rohan Edoras diorama. So this is the only Middle Earth one in the uh, in the, the museum. It's pretty sweet. Some epic War in Rohan action. It's definitely got me thinking about my own Edoras board coming up in the next couple of years. Let's steal all of their ideas. Now I've already built Edoras twice, and I'll be building it a third and final time on the location it was filmed when I moved to New Zealand at the end of this year. So I'm pretty damn familiar with this location and they have done a lovely job with this board. Let's just get something out of the way now. Ray Dranfield, one of the lead scenery sculptors at Games Workshop who did these Rohan kits and I'm sure many more of the things we're going to see is an absolute god and one of the most talented people working for Games Workshop. When we compare this build to my own Edoras build, the Warhammer Diorama team obviously have the huge advantage of building models into their landscape whereas mine are simply scenic pieces that need to work for gaming, but I would say their overall build quality probably edges mine out. The consistency of that build created by the plastic kits, especially compared to my earlier scratch builds, really elevates the piece, makes it really cohesive, although the actual ground covers and rock work could definitely be leveled up, so hopefully I can outdo them there on my third attempt. So final verdict, I'm gonna have to just give this one to myself with a score of 8 out of 10 Aowen stews, more on the promise of my current plans in my head than any anything tangible, and besides, I have a sneaking suspicion I'm going to need an early lead here. Remember, if you're planning to grab the new Age of Darkness box or any Warhammer goodies, be they Heresy, Middle Earth, or anything in between, use my affiliate sellers down in the description. You'll get the best prices on the market in the UK, EU, US, and Australia with great discounts, and you'll get to send me some dollar dues to support the channel as well. It is a huge help, so thank you to everyone using them so far. If all this scenery is getting you pumped for the heresy and you'd like the chance to go into the draw to win one of the new Age of Darkness box sets, like this video, subscribe and comment down below your favourite Horus Heresy location and why you're excited for the new edition of the Horus Heresy. We'll be giving one of these massive boxes away when the Mark of Kelth campaign launches in a few weeks, so stay tuned for even more chances to win. In the next room, I stumbled across an amazing set of Horus Heresy
conspiracy themed dios. Prospero, a world eater spaceport, Cygnus Prime, and a bunch of lovely mini showcases and detailed dios like an epic Mechanicum Titan arming chamber that you just cannot see through all the reflections on the cabinet on camera. Oh my goodness for a polarizing filter. So we're starting to um, level up pretty hardcore now. These world eaters are sick. This is all made from the old Forge World landing pad boards. There's heaps of cool stuff in here. Some really, really nice kit bashing. Oh, my world eaters just want to march to war. Prospero in particular is a lovely build that is basically carved from scratch and is a perfect matchup for my own Leptius Numinous board from the first episode of The Mark of Kelth. These are the perfect contenders for our head-to-head -head battle today as both of these boards share a really common design element as they are blending more classical architecture with modern far future stylings. Prospero with its Egyptian futuristic aesthetic and Leptius Numinous fully embracing the Ultramar Romans in space vibe. Prospero is an incredible location in the universe, dominated by temples and ziggurats devoted to learning and arcane arts, and the exhibition board is easily the best representation of the location I've ever seen. And as you'll see in more detail in one of next month's videos, the Kelth Governor's Palace Leptius Numinous is similarly classically styled as it is an old Kelth historical fortress that the Ultramar government have maintained as an operational government dwelling to use it as a prestigious stately office. And that's definitely 100% canon. as set out by Dan Abnett and just an insanely convenient coincidence that it was perfect for me to just make it out of Minas Tirith. So who takes home the victory in round two? Well, the carving quality of both builds is about on par, but the layout design of Prospero in such a small display is really strong. That beautiful balance between the foreground elements, the backdrop creating depth, even though the piece is only really a four by four, is very, very good. But I'm going to have to let myself be swayed here by the sheer scale of the 40 square feet of Leptius Numinous, and both boards are going to take home a score of two out of two Emperor's Balls. We have a draw. This is proper leveling up now. This thing is massive. Uh, I mean, it could use a little bit of that uh, Geek Gaming Snow Powder, but um, yeah, the rock work, the ice, ice. Look at the ice, Ollie, down in the, in the grooves. That looks absolutely sick. Uh, and pretty, pretty happy with these towers as well. Look at that, look at the fly wrench up on the top. That's so cool, so cool. As we move through more of the exhibition, there is so much to see from all of Games Workshop systems. But the one thing that really grabbed me was some of the really detailed, smaller scale industrial environments, often based on Zone Mortalis or Sector Mechanicus components. Nothing makes a wall of titans, right? This is mental. But I, I actually am more into the facade, the piece that goes behind it. There's sort of bits of the, um, the cut up Sector Mechanicum flooring, um, the big Imperialis flooring, all these kind of bits of uh, Mechanicus terrain that have been compiled together to make this really sick backdrop. It's exactly what I was doing cutting up my pieces for our Cities of Death flooring and I just think it looks awesome. It's really cool, not to mention all these sick little displays of the preloaded titans. Cool stuff. This is absolutely ridiculous. Look at the verticality in there. That is mental. I just want to get some, uh, get some marines in there. To set against the myriad of Warhammer World environments in this style, we have the Zetson Verid Yard Orbital Station from the Mark of Kelf campaign. This beast will also have its own video in a few months, but it is a sexy mix of Sector Mechanicus, Zone Mortalis, 3D printed and scratch built components, which forms the perfect space station or spaceship interior and is insanely modular. Of course, it's a Zorpazor board, what do you expect? In the campaign, it is used three times in different configurations and even forms half of our mega board finale set up in a huge control room where Gilliman and Corfaeron have an insane duel atop the control station for the entire orbital defenses of Kelth. I love my Zets and Verid Yard and I'm super proud of it, but I only had a week to build it as the deadline for the shoot was so tight, so it's nowhere near as detailed as I wanted, but some of these highly detailed industrial boards are some of the most gorgeous build work I've ever seen. This is the stuff that really blew me away. It's not about the scale of the exhibition boards, but the ultimate macro detailing. It's the kind of detail I dream of achieving, but just can't manage with my resources. Games Workshop storm ahead on the scoreboard here, picking up a massive 18 out of 20 legions, whereas all I can muster is a measly nine loyalists.
But with scores level, it's time to take it to the ultimate battleground, and I can confidently say, as the king of stupidly massive terrain, I'm quite comfortable taking the home ground advantage. The Warhammer Exhibition Dios so far have been impressive, no doubt, but most of my boards are bigger, and I can assure you, ladies and gentlemen, that size does matter. Oh, what's, what's that light coming from the next room? <laughs> oh my god. Holy shit. I don't know if the scale is translating at all or if you can even see my face in here, but this thing is ridiculous. F*** this. F*** this. I am not making scenery anymore. What the f***ing f*** is this monstrosity of god-tier proportions? Hey look, there's a Titan with void shields. <laughs> we forgot to glue house on, I just realised. That was, that was empty. Do you reckon the curator will murder me if I hop in the middle for a shot? <laughs> Don't I want to be in there, I want to be amongst it. Look at this f***ing thing. This is a drop pod smashing into a reaver. No, a warhound. Far out, that is wild. Well, surprise, surprise, the multi-million dollar company has stormed home and steamrolled me in the final bout. I mean, this board is just utterly metal. But, 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 we haven't even met the challenger yet, the Numinous City Mega Board. This Zorbazort monstrosity is featured in a variety of configurations in the Mark of Kelf and features locations from the Port of Lanchia right up to the Manifest Cogitator Guildhall and is the most modular board I have ever built. It seamlessly blends GW plastic kits, scratch-built foam-carved and 3D-printed architecture Architecture and has some beast sexy features like full destructibility and straight up insane modularity. Frankly, I cannot wait to show it to you guys in depth in the coming months. And you know what? As a gaming board, it's, it's, it's amazing. But as a diorama, it just can't hold a candle to this mega creation at the exhibition. But who am I kidding? Why on earth would it? Weirdest thing is like seeing these boards and like getting all these little ideas, not just for builds and layouts, but for techniques. They've done this crazy thing here with all their smoke and explosions that they're using foam flock, like clump foliage, and spraying it black and lightened greys. I've never seen explosions or like fl flames or smoke done like that before. It looks absolutely awesome. There's so much granularity and texture to the smoke. It's absolutely sick. I am definitely going to steal that. I am one person with a bunch of helpful friends looking at you, Adam and Felix, and the Warhammer World Exhibition team are a world-class staff of people dedicated purely to building and painting and displaying the best Warhammer scenery. I have to say, travelling to the exhibition was exhilarating. It made me feel completely humbled and inspired all at the same time, and I have so many ideas swirling around this mental noggin of mine. I truly hope in the future I could even do something with the team, maybe work on a display for the museum with them to check out their build process. At the end of the day, we're all just artists walking our different journey of creation, and so far, I'm f***ing enjoying mine. If you're absolutely pumped for the Horus Heresy, our mega Mark of Kelf campaign here at Zorbazorb, drop me a comment down below, smash that like and subscribe button so you don't miss the big launch in just maybe a couple of weeks now when this video drops. We're so close. We have so much Heresy content coming your way. I'm currently sitting on 27 videos yet to be edited, so strap the f*** in, boys and girls. Heresy is here to stay. If you're really keen to support the channel, feel free to check out my Patreon link down below, and a huge shout out to all of these amazing folks. I literally could not do this without you. And an extra special thank you to one of my best mates, Joe Ash, who came up with the awesome concept for this whole video. That's it for now, folks. I'll see you in just a few days with the next Heresy update, and always remember to let the galaxy burn!